Now let's go ahead and take a look here at example two, where we want to find the area that's bounded by the curves y equals the sine of x, y equals the cosine of x, and these two x equals functions. Now, if I was to go ahead and try to start graphing this out, I'll notice that since x is only going to be zero and larger, I don't really need much of uh, my quadrants uh, two and three. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say, let's say I have a picture that looks something kind of like this. Okay, so here's my x, here's my y axis. I know that at zero, my sine function is zero. And I know that by the time I get to pi over two, my sine function reaches a height of one. So my sine function is going to be doing something kind of like this, right? It's going to reach that peak of one and then it's start, going to start to go down. I'm not even going to bother to sketch the rest of my sine function because I only care about this interval. I'm going to do the same thing with my cosine function. At x equals zero, my cosine is a one. And at pi over two, my cosine is a zero. So I know that again, I'm going to have this kind of arched shape maxing out up here at the value of one. And I'm interested in trying to find, again, the area that exists between these curves. Um, so the, the, the yard that's fenced in by these curves. So I'm going to go ahead here and just draw my x equals pi over 2 line. And then I'm going to try to figure out where is my region. Can you identify where the region is? Well, if you thought about it here for a little bit, there's a couple tempting options. We have this option over here, region 1. I would say we have this option that's tempting, which is region two, and this option, which is region three. Now what I'll show you right away is that actually region number two here is a bad choice. This region should not be included. Notice that the fence on that is going to be my sine function, my cosine function, but a line y equals zero, which is not one of my bounds, and therefore I shouldn't include that. Region number three and region number one are actually good regions. They're bounded by the given curves. And so I'll actually take both of those regions together as my one total region. Okay, so again, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to draw in some rectangles. You're gonna want to not do this. Uh, you're going to feel the urge to fight me, but I'm going to encourage you to do this regardless. Just draw in a couple rectangles because you want to see how tall these rectangles are. Now, clearly, as I look at these rectangles, they're not all the same size. They change in size. But how would I determine their height? If I was at a given x coordinate, how could I figure out maybe how tall this rectangle is? Well, notice whatever x coordinate I was at, I could plug that x into my top function, find that y, subtract the y when I plug x into that bottom function, and I'll get this height. So notice here though that my top function right now, this function here, was our y equals our cosine of x. And this bottom function was our y equals sine of x. So in this case, I'm gonna have that my total amount of area is going to be equal to an integral, and I'm going to have to have cosine of x minus the sine of x listed out here. And this is pretty nice. It seems like all my rectangles seem to follow this pattern, right? Where the cosine is on top and the sine is dictating what's on bottom. Except um, maybe not for all of the red line segments. Notice that actually right around this point here, doesn't the sine function now become the top? And the cosine function becomes the bottom. This is very interesting because we're gonna wanna try to figure out where that point is because it seems like these rectangles are fundamentally different. They have different tops and or bottoms. So to tackle this, I'm actually going to need to do an entire separate integral. I'll have like an integral that represents the left side and an integral that represents that right side of my blue space. On the right side, notice that again that I'll have my sine of x minus my cosine of x to find my heights of the rectangles. Now I just need to find the bounds. I need to find like where do those first set of rectangles exist? And of course, to do that, I'm going to need to be able to find this point of intersection. Well, the point of intersection is where the sine and the cosine graph would be equal. And so if I'm thinking, where does the sine of x, if I'm looking here first for an intersection, 
if I'm looking for where does the sine of x equal the cosine of x, well, you might be able to immediately determine that those values were equal at an angle of 45 degrees, or at pi over 4. And that makes it really easy to set up our bounds here. 0 to pi over 4 gives us our first set of red rectangles, and then going from pi over 4 to pi over 2 gives us our second set of red rectangles. I would have to evaluate these integrals separately in order to be able to come up with a grand total amount of area for this region. Now in this video, I'm not actually going to go through that evaluation. I'm going to leave a lot of the evaluations of these integrals for you to try on your own, and I highly encourage you to do it. But in these videos, I just want you to spend time focusing on how we actually set up these integrals. The solutions to each of these questions, remember, can be found up in Blackboard in the detailed notes that are posted for each section. And so I'd ask you to go take a look at the step-by-step -step process there and just let me know if you have any questions as you try to work through this problem, the rest of this problem, on your own.